Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial, and this is all about how to perform pivot operations with text. Of course, we don't have text data type in SQL, so this is about uh, ch character strings, char or varchars. Let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio, and I'll go through some examples. I've got an example here where I'm just creating a table and if you do want to follow along with the video this code will be available in the description at the bottom. So we're just checking if a simple table house attributes exists. If it does we're going to drop that from the database. We've then got our create table statement of house attributes. We're simply going to have uh, an ID uh, which is an integer value and it's not null. And then we're going to have an attribute, which we'll get to shortly, and a value. And both of those are stored as varchar 50. Then we're just going to insert some values into there. Now what I'm using here is sort of a format of a generic table. Uh, and what that means is they, they can be used for when you have a variable number of attributes that are not known at design time. And I thought a house would be quite good for that because we have a variable number of bedrooms, whether they have en suites, different room sizes, uh, and it can be quite difficult to store all the information in a table. So how a generic table works is, and it probably be more clear when I run the select shortly. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and execute this now and create those tables and insert those rows. Uh, and then I'm just going to run a simple select from that table. So the attribute is effectively our, our column name and the value is the value that will be within our rows. Um, and So this is the general format of, of a generic table um, and there's many arguments as to whether generic tables are good or bad design. And like I say, they can be suitable for when you have a, a varying number of attributes um, particularly if you're going to have a lot of attributes that just contain a lot of nulls. Um, and also the main reason is if you don't know the number of attributes at design time. So if this, if this table can quite often change to save you constantly having to change the structure of the table by adding new columns, we can store it like this. So we effectively store the, the column name as a value in the database. Uh, and that's quite similar to a NoSQL database's key value pairs. So all we're storing is the attribute and the value it contains. And the massive downside to generic tables, and I don't want to go on about them too much, I can talk about them for a while, is that when we're joining to this, it doesn't really fit our model. So if we, if we have a, a master table that we're looking to join to that contains the the house and the address and some some information um, relating to the house itself um, that can be stored in third normal form. When we join to this table, for example, for house ID 1, we have six rows here, so we're going to get six versions of that table. The downside is we must perform a pivot operation on this table and then join the results of that operation to our other table. But I thought this was a good example to go through um, and demonstrate how to perform pivot operations using text. So typically pivot operations we would perform on numeric values because we're going to be applying an aggregate function uh, such as sum or average or count. But we can also use those aggregate functions on string values, character strings. Uh, we can use count um, which isn't going to be applicable in this scenario because it's just going to return one for when there's a value. Or we can use min and max. Now for this example, uh, and we'll see that shortly, min and max are applicable because the aggregate function is artificial in this case. We're performing a one-to-one -one pivot. All we're simply doing is taking column values and transferring them to rows, transposing the data. Um, but we will go through another example where we do a many-to-one pivot and see how that works with our, with our character strings. 
So we're going to go ahead and start writing a, a pivot example with uh, with our Barcher column in this case, but this will also work on on chars or n chars as well. So we're going to simply create our derived table, which is not necessary in this case, but I, I still do this as part of the syntax. So we're going to select house ID, attribute and value, which is going to be within square brackets or parentheses because it's it's a keyword in SQL Server. And I'm just going to wrap the whole query there within parentheses as well. Um, so that's going to sort serve as a derived table. Then we're going to write the keyword pivot and then again we're open parentheses and this is where we're going to apply our aggregate function. So Typically what I would use when dealing with character strings in this example, I don't know why, just personal preference, I always choose max. So we're going to say max value for attribute in, and now we're going to list our new column names. Uh, and this can be quite difficult with generic tables, and again I've mentioned dynamic pivoting in the past. Um, we're not going to use that in this example but I, I will have some videos up on the channel shortly regarding dynamic pivot operations because they can be beneficial in this scenario especially when we don't know the number of attributes. Uh, all I'm going to do is select distinct attribute from this table just to find our, our list of uh, new column values that we will need to create. And we don't have to create all the column values, we can cut it down if we want to. Uh, so we're going to start off with master bedroom size master bedroom on suite second bedroom size second bedroom on suite third bedroom size and I know there's a lot of different attributes I could have had in here related to houses but just for simplicity I decided to cut it down slightly so I'm just going to add those in uh, I'll just copy and paste that to the next line so it's easier to see and we'll alias our pivot as P. The other thing is we are not allowed to use subqueries within our pivot which is a major downfall of pivot in, in my opinion. A lot of people think the fact that we can't apply multiple aggregations is a downfall of pivot but I think the major downfall is that we couldn't just put this within the query. So if if I comment out that for now, I can't add in this as a simple subquery that would create those column values for us. So I'll go ahead and do my final select, which will be house ID value. No value value, and it will be a new defined column names. I'll just tidy up this query. I'll just hide the results for now. Add in from. Remove this query. So at the moment we've got this as a subquery. So if I go ahead and try to execute this, I'll just get a message to say that's incorrect. So if I change it to our new column names, so these are all our attributes within the table. And if I go ahead and execute that now, we can see from the results grid here, we've managed to pivot our data. So each of our houses has a master bedroom, 
they don't always have a ensuite um, they don't always have a second bedroom ensuite and not all our houses have a third bedroom either um, like I say this there could be a lot more attributes in here typically there would be if there was a need to use a generic table or we would be constantly needing to alter the table but I've just done this for simplicity but that's that's what you need to think of in terms of generic tables so I'll just hide the results grid and one, one thing I mentioned I'll just remove this now so we mentioned we can't actually add in a subquery um, but the one thing we can do if you come across this certain scenario you might not be interested in all of the attributes say we're only interested in the master and second bedrooms then we don't have the requirement to perform a pivot operation with our third or fourth bedroom. Now we can simply just remove those from the final select. If I remove the comma and then we'd only get the data we needed but then we're still asking the pivot operation to perform the work. We'd still have to list out however many columns we have within the pivot operation. So I can just remove those there uh, and that is likely to speed up my query because it's not looking for those values when performing the pivot operation. Uh, I'll just add those back in. And the other thing we spoke about was what aggregate function to use. I'll just show you an example of this. We use count. Um, so count is not is just performing a simple count. It's not doing anything to the data. So I'll show you what those results look like. So it just simply shows us a one or a zero if data exists. So that's not really relevant. But our other option we could have used is min in this case. And remember, as I said, this is performing a one to one pivot. So all we're doing is taking the column values and changing them to rows. The aggregate function has to be present in the pivot operation but it's artificial, it's not actually serving any purpose at this time. So if I go ahead and execute that, you can see when I perform that query using min as an aggregate function, I get exactly the same results. Now when the, the difference between min and max becomes applicable, when we have multiple values, so when we're performing a many to one pivot operation, so if I was to change my initial insert, if I simply add another master bedroom size, which is perfectly allowed for house ID 1, uh, and I'll just demonstrate this by showing something ridiculous as 100 by 100. Um, so these are values in the sizes in meters. Uh, that's how we measure in the UK. So if I go ahead and execute that, which will drop and recreate the table and then insert multiple values for this particular attribute against that, that house ID. And then if we have a look at running this query again, and we'll, we'll, start, with, we'll start with min in this example. So we can see our master bedroom size is 100 by 100. And then we'll change this to max and we'll execute it again. And our master bedroom size now is five by five. Now, if you're watching the video and you're thinking, well, 100 is greater than five. So why is max showing the lower value? That's because remember, we're performing this operation on strings. So in terms of string ordering, five is greater than one and one is less than five so that's what we need to pay attention to particularly if we have numeric values that are stored within our varchar columns uh, and now what we've demonstrated there is we've actually given meaning to the aggregate function so depending on whether we use min or max would be what value is returned also count would now have some meaning because it should return a two for that so if we needed to count the number of attributes against an individual ID the number of the same attribute against an individual ID 
count would also give some meaning to us as well. And I'll just change that back to max. And there's our final query. I'll just hide the results grid now just to show that that query how it does look on screen and I'll just tidy up these results a bit just to display it a bit better so again we're applying our aggregate function to our, our column that stores our values in this case uh, and then we're spreading attribute for our new column names that are currently stored as, as rows. The other thing to mention, just a last note on generic tables. So in this example, I've stored this as a varchar to go through this example. There is also another custom data type effectively in SQL Server, which is SQL variant. So you might see that used as well. So you might need to apply some conversion logic uh, within your derived table before performing that operation. Really hope you have enjoyed that video. If you have, check out the other videos on the channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.